G'day adventurers. Well, here we are, still locked down in Melbourne with nothing to do but spend money on our bikes. So uh, I decided to go crazy and buy a steering dampener. Scott's, uh, Scott's make a steering dampener for the T7 now with a whole kit. And um, yeah, today I'll show you an install video. Uh, I purchased this kit through Tori Moto, who's out here in Western Victoria. So shout out to Tori Moto. Um, she's selling a whole bunch of gear that uh, you might like for various bikes. And uh, yeah, this is newly on the list. So anyway, let's install this thing. So what, uh, what you get in this box is some stickers, lots of stickers, <laughs> as usual. Uh, our instruction manual, which we will, with some photographs, which we'll put over here. The actual steering dampener manual, owner's manual. And then, there she is. Ooh, gold. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's install this. So what we, what we need, the tools we need are a hammer. You need a hammer for any serious garage work, a punching pin, a six mil uh, Allen key, a five mil Allen key, a 27 mil socket, if you have one. Uh, and here is a 17 mil socket with lots of extensions however many extensions you can find the ratchet and a 10 mil i think that's about all the tools we'll need we need so uh let's show you what to do so up until yesterday i hadn't installed a steering dampener so uh, i installed it and then i uninstalled it and packed it all the way so that uh, i can show you what to do without you know any anything uh too incorrect so the first thing that we need to do is tie the front wheel to the frame. So I've put a so I've put this uh, strap just around the uh, crash bars, and this pulls the front wheel towards the bike. And I've got the bike on a center stand, and I've got the back wheel jacked up so that the front wheel is on the ground. This is uh, actually pretty important and you will see why shortly. So the next thing we want to do is take the handlebars off, which is as simple as undoing uh, your two clamps. So these are your 6mm Allen keys. Um, they could be pretty tight. Make sure you're undoing them and then you undo them. And your handlebars will fall over. So once your clamps are off, your handlebars, uh, just push them forward and out the way. Uh, you can you know, make sure you don't scratch anything. You might want to zip tie this back in place. In fact. In fact, let's do that. So then when we, what we need to do, th this nut is actually quite difficult to get to because if I grab my socket, you will see by the time I put that in there, there's actually no room for the um, there's no there's no room for the socket to go into the or the driver to go into the socket so so forget that um, what we want to do is take this off first and so there's just a nut on the underside but to get to that this is why I said get extensions on your extensions with your 17 mil and from the front of the bike you can go straight up here and you can probably see uh, so you can see there's the nut up uh, there where I'm pointing
So I think I found the best way is actually to put the, the driver up behind the front triple. And then you can feed it up through there. And not sure if you can see that. Uh, that's gone onto the nut there. So like I said, that is in behind the triple. Get your ratchet on here and undo. Now there is a washer up there, so you want to try and catch that with your fingers. Um, because when you pull this nut off, yeah, that washer will just be loose. This nut is a dome nut. And the washer is just sitting on that. But you can quite easily reach that with your hand up to the up up to the top triple there. And we'll just do the other side. Grab the washer. So then we can just remove this handlebar perch, just slide that out. Now there is another two washers here and you don't want to lose them if you don't have to. Problem is these things slide down into the top of the radiator there and hard to fish out again. So uh, grab, make sure you grab them. Then we want to remove our triples now the reason the reason we need to remove the triple is that the scots bracket um, mounts onto the head stem on this uh, this particular model so we have to take the triple off so now we get our 27 mil socket and undo the, the head stem nut you might want to stop the wheel from turning Now this, uh, this nut doesn't actually do anything to your steering head. All, all this does is hold your triple clamp down. So um, nothing much to worry about there. Uh, washer, don't lose that. And then to get our triples off, we need to undo our top uh, four pinch bolts. Yours uh, shouldn't be too loose, but mine are fairly loose because I just didn't do them up tight yesterday. <laughs> uh, now with those pinch bolts undone, uh, the, the triple top triple should come off. And it sh I, I've recently taken my forks out and then put them back in. So um, I think this surface is reasonably clean. If it's all dusty, you might need, you might want to grab a rubber mallet and just give this a bit of a, a bit of a tap. Uh, around the place and give it a wheel until it does lift off. Now you'll notice that the ignition and everything comes out and all the wiring so this will be a bit in the way. So you, also you don't want this, uh, you don't want the cast aluminium to scratch your forks or anything so you might want to have a rag something to put in there and I jam one in this side as well just for good measure so these come off uh, fairly fairly easily there's a like a locking washer you see how that that fits in there And then this is where our this is where our punch and hammer come in. So I just uh, it's doing up. Just get a punch and just start tapping. So 
So that's the locking nut. Then there is a... I was going to say, and then there's a rubber spacer, but the rubber actually came with the with my lock, locking nut. And then the bottom um, nut, this is the one that's tight. And this is also one that's got a, a, some set torque setting as to how tight it puts your steering head bearing, hold how tight it holds your steering head bearing in place. So you probably want to get a good idea of how tight this is. And when we do it back up, we're going to do it back to the same. Um, I don't, you, know, you can't really get a torque wrench on here that I know of, so it's all a bit by feel. And that is still loose from when I did it the other day. Now, as soon as we undo this nut, there is there is nothing stopping the front wheel from rolling away uh, or, or drop dropping out, and all these bearings that are in here just dropping out the bottom of the head stem. That's why we need to hold the front wheel in place so that. It doesn't move. If it does move, I mean, you can get it back in, um, but it's a bit of a pain in the ass. takes a bit of manhandling. Uh, then there's dust, seal, dust cap. Take that off. We actually don't use this dust cap again. So then this is our head stem bearing here. So like I said, if, if this pops out and your whole head stem moves, it's a bit of a pain to wiggle it back into place. Um, I've done that. Not on this bike, but I have done it on the 1190, and I know a uh, riding buddy of mine, Silas. I was out camping when that happened to him as well, and um, yeah, it's a pain. So just be careful. Try and try and keep it in place. And like I said, that's you know this one's pretty solid there because of this strap holding the front wheel in place and weight on the front wheel. The bike is is being forced down onto this bearing. Um, yeah, so our new ring, our new head stem ring, um, just fits over here and it's got to go down far enough that, that the new dust cap can sit on top. I might just take this sticker off. Now, our little sticker just reminds us, grease the tower pin and be sure that it remains fully floating. So this sits in here and it, it it's um, free in here to turn. So we want to make sure that that never gets gunked up. Uh, I think that is an item that you should service every now and again. There you go. A little bit of grease on there, not too much. And plonk that in there. Hmm. Maybe a bit bit much. So you get your 5mm uh, Allen and just make sure that this is loose. And the other item you might want is a big flat um, flat-headed uh, screwdriver. We'll see why in a second. So this is a tight fit over the head stem, so you might want to just open that up a little bit. So the, the manual just recommends that uh, the ring just sits, it says 0.08 of an inch. Now, <laughs> I think that's about uh, 0.08 of an inch is two millimeters. So we're just going to eyeball it two millimeters. You know, it's not it's not much. It's about there somewhere. Hmm, I sort of wish they'd had this uh, this fitting in the opposite direction so I could do it from this side. But we can only do what we can do. Well, that seems pretty tight. Okay, that's pretty tight. Okay, so in the uh, box they give us a new dust seal. So we can take that out. Yeah, nice little machined dust seal. Now, when this is pressed down, what we're going to make sure is that there's a gap between this and the um, and this bracket because we don't want them um, rubbing on each other. And we've got to put it back on our nut. Okay, finger tight is probably not quite tight enough. OK, 
Okay, so this shouldn't really be over tightened, but I just know that it was about that pressure of tapping to make it undo. Put on our little rubber spacer, put on our top, our locking uh, nut. Now I'm going to do this up until the uh, slots line up so that our little locking washer will fit back in there. Perfect. Uh, and now we'll be putting our triple back, back on. You might be able to fit the new handlebar perch while it's up here so that you can get to those nuts easy, but I found with the long spanner getting from the bottom was pretty simple. So I'm just gonna put these this back on. I might use the rubber mallet again just to give that a Now the new uh, Scott's perch, when it sits on here, it actually leaves a gap for you to get to that nut. So you can put this nut on later, but I'm gonna put it on now so that it's holding down the top triple. Uh, and then we're just going to do up our pinch bolts again, making sure that these are poking through by your three or five mil or whatever it was before. When doing up your pinch bolts, just make sure you, you, know, you do one up firm and then, and then do the other one. The other one as tight as you want and then come back to the top one because it will always be a little bit loose you have to go backwards and forwards a few times don't just do one to talk one to spec and then do the other one to spec because they'll be the first one will be loose and you don't want your forks dropping out on the road okay Okay, so now what they give you in the box is, is your new perch, which is going to sit on here. But what we need to do is put those washers back. So the two washers that came with the original uh, perch need to go back on there. And we need to grab our handlebar clamps. That's the wrong. So these are six mil. Undo these. Uh, also in the box is two new bolts with nuts and washers for our perch. So these are uh, nylock washers, uh, nylock nuts, so they won't come undone. Bar clamp. Um, it's just got some little CNC routed sort of notches that that fits in. And then our bolt can drop through. Don't drop your washer. Same with the other side. Uh, so it should look something like this. And then we're going to put it onto the bike with the notch facing downwards, <laughs> back towards the, the rider. Okay, then we're going to get our new nut, which is still 17 mil, and it's washer. And we're going to start them on the on the thread. So you can hold the washer on with one hand and get the nut started with the other without too much of a problem. There you go. So now they're started. Oh, there's an extra tool uh, that you need. That's an 8 mil uh, Allen key.
Okay, so all that's left in the box is the steering dampener and its two screws. So we'll grab this, put the screws Now, um, that's pretty obvious how this is set up. There's the, the two screw holes and the pin. Pin obviously needs to be pointing up and down because it's going to fit into this hole here. So we can probably just align that one up first. I'm actually just going to put a little bit of uh, Loctite on this. Might have a little bit of factory Loctite on there. And before someone else asks, um, no, this is not red Loctite, it is blue. It's just uh, this weird brand Dyna Grip. They just all came in red containers, I do believe. <laughs> just to confuse things. Um, maybe you can use a torque wrench, but you know, if you grab it, uh, <laughs> grab your shifter from here somewhere. All right. So then, uh, a couple of checks. Uh, we need to check that the pin is not touching the bottom of the stabilizer. So that gap in there should be, I think the manual said at least three millimeters. Something like that. So anyway, that's more than that. That looks pretty comfortable. So we can go ahead and put our handlebars back in. Um, so you'll see that the original uh, handlebar clamp bolts are black and they sit there. If I take one of them out and compare that to the new handlebar bolt, you'll see that they are exactly the same length and they're the same diameter. So what I'm going to do is use these ones because I think they look better than silver. So there was there is a, a dot on the bar which I think you can line up flat unless you want them a little bit forward just a yeah. so again these are pinch bolts so don't just do up one and then do up the other because by the time you do up the second one, the first one will be loose. <laughs> and we'll just undo our strap down here. And then... Make sure everything moves it doesn't get anywhere near that's looking a pretty good and one other thing I should have pointed out is that the um, the original perch if I and I'll put this like this if I put that there you'll see that the, the new Scott's um, perch and the original perch are exactly the same height. So if you don't want your handlebars raised, um, this is absolutely perfect. And if you had a riser on there, you'd just put them back. So there you go, Scott's steering dampener on a T700. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah, so there's the dampener. 
doesn't get in the way of anything. Um, beautiful. Um, yeah, so thanks again to Tori uh, Moto for supplying that. I don't know why I'm thanking her. Cost me a fortune. <laughs> but she talked me into getting it. She said, Brendan, you need a steering dampener. So anyway, so now I've got one. Um, and uh, yeah, awesome. Bit of gold bling on the bike. See ya.